you don't want to start this job and it's different from what you were expecting so read the job description what is this firm all about what is this, the, the kind of service they render as a care home hi guys welcome to the channel how are you all doing i hope you're fine i hope you're good i'm good so today's video welcome anyways my name is over tamaka and i'm a youtuber nigerian youtuber based here in the uk so today's video let's get it to be quick so i've been really really reluctant to pick up my camera these few weeks i've just been low spirits for some reasons but today is first of march and with the way like the mood we are in as nigerians i don't know i don't know if everybody is in that mood but i really felt like to get out of my my low spirits i had to do this video so today's video because on here we educate we love we share entertain and just share my life experience with you guys i'm going to be educating you on this topic so today's topic we're going to be talking about the things you need to know before picking up a healthcare assistant job in the uk now if you've watched my video my last i think one my last two videos i've I mentioned that I quit my job as a domiciliary healthcare assistant. Yes. So now just imagine I like this is my experience basically because if I had if I had like pearl knowledge about all these things and the differences, I probably not even consider applying for this job. But first off, I didn't know the difference. Yes, I didn't know the difference because in our head it's like, hey, it's healthcare assistant job we're applying for. So I just want to like quickly tell you the difference. If you're planning to come to the UK and you want to pick up a healthcare job, just look out for these things to enable you know if you're going to be able to do this job and not like changing employer because first off, we want to build experience and you changing one job, one care job or the other is not something that's going to help if you're just like changing because probably not what you expected. So um I left my last job basically because it was domiciliary and I explained that it was really really difficult for me not because the job itself is difficult because you have job you're barely just even doing personal care medication and the rest so it was really not difficult for me but because I didn't understand when I was when I was here or when I was recently here nobody told me that oh this is what this job entails you need your car you need to have like be, be ready to be on the weather like when it's cold when it's raining and all those things nobody told me all those things but because we are new jjc where i've been now i was like i'm looking for a job without checking the job description like care job or schedule for me i was just applying so i think it should be different because it saves you time it saves you a lot of stress when you actually know oh what well, this is what i'm looking for for someone like me now, the stage I am, I think I'm actually looking for jobs that would offer me sponsorship. So rather than wasting my time applying for care homes that are not in the UK sponsorship list and all those things, why would I even waste my time applying to jobs? So I'm just trying to give you an insight. Why, why waste your time applying for something that you think that is not suitable for you? So by the time you know that this job is, this is what this job entails really in depth, you're not going to be applying for it so you look for something that you can do so in care generally in my own knowledge in my best knowledge i think care is like divided there's a lot of care because if you if you work with with the nhs that i think there's care assistants that work with um nursing mothers just different different that cares like different care but when it comes to like like normal care that we know like did i say normal i don't know but when it comes to care basically there are like three types of care basically and these are like domiciliary which is like the very popular one now like literally every job mostly popular now because every every people are now changing to that idea that as in the residents here are now changing to that idea that they want to be taken care of in their own home so to make it easier for them they look for care assistants that would go to that pet like go to that service user's house and render the care to them so the the idea is you rather than them leaving their house to maybe let's say to um residential homes 
and all those things respite and the rest they actually want to receive care in their own home they want to stay in their own home mostly these people are elderly people even young children with maybe disabilities like like disabilities physical disability mental disabilities and the rest so domiciliary job is like one of the most difficult if i'm not like i'm not lying unless if you have a car even when you have a car it, it requires you like being me- mentally involved and f- like physically involved and everything so you're using your mind your heart your in fact you're using everything to do that job you're driving you're trying to get to this house that one it just exhausts so much energy from you to me that's my perspective about the job so domiciliary care you go from one house to another usually it's not just one person like it's not just one person because you make more money when there's a lot of service users they call it calls you make more money when you have like a lot of calls on your roster now you, like your roster is like where they put on all the shifts all the people's house you're going to be going and what time you're going to be there and what time you're going to be leaving that tells you how many minutes you're going to be spending in that person's house so domiciliary care and usually so when they say you're going to be walking around it doesn't mean like you're going to be walking from one location or one city to another it means that if you're in let's say an example ne22 uh-huh. they are going to be posting you to areas around ne22 they are not going to be taking you but usually now it's even difficult to see people when they tell you oh it's close they're going to go see you somewhere close to and your your environment if you find out that it's really really still far like 20 minutes walk 30 minutes walk 10 minutes walk and that is just it so domiciliary care is moving from one place to another to deliver care to people who who need service in their own home so it requires you um probably living so when with domiciliary care you're not going to do the whole um you're not going to sometimes you might just do morning calls the morning calls are calls that start from seven o'clock that seven o'clock in the morning to probably 12 o'clock these are like morning call from 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock is like lunch call or dinner call and then from 3 o'clock to 7 or 8 is like they call it tea time calls so you're going to that you might probably get morning and afternoon calls or they will call you for only evening calls. it just depends on the shift and the roster available so this way it's quite different yes because you're not in a place you're not in a particular place you're moving from one place to another so that is just basically domiciliary care and in domiciliary excuse me so in domiciliary care you actually do like a lot because it's probably yeah yeah you do a lot and there's it's not just you that would be coming there now let's say you have like your money you're in charge of the morning calls someone else is going to come for afternoon calls someone else is going to come for like evening calls so in the morning you do the morning stuff like doing their personal care administering their morning medication if they have any just basically personal care making their breakfast and the rest and that is just it i think that's just it for morning calls and morning calls are usually really really intense and time taking because you're going to be taking like having they're going to be having their wash like you prepare their meal change their clothes probably even go out for shopping if you like go for their shopping if they need it but these are usually not like every day in the week for like for sure when it comes to shopping it's not every day in the week so that is just it basically guys so domiciliary care is actually easy and most times you are attached to somebody let's say if this service user is somebody that requires lifting maneuvering and all those things they will not send you alone so if you if you're working in care already and you're working in a place where you maybe somebody is like is bed bound they cannot move around and all those things and they tell you to actually go alone i don't think you should be doing that because you can't handle the machine let's say you're using the hoist to move that person you can't do it alone so usually when it comes to domiciliary care you actually go like you can find yourself doing double calls double calls are like when two people yes two people are sent to go to a one like one person's house or one service user's house to deliver care sometimes it's single when you have like single i think single is usually when the person is more independent that the person you're going to his house is more independent so you don't have to leave you don't have to carry you you are just assisting do you understand you're just assisting like assisting with medication you don't need two people for it 
and basically just they can actually have their bath all you do is just help them clean their body and then put on their clothes and that is just it if you're on a single call so um i think that is it for domiciliary care domiciliary care is nice because you're you're just on your own you're boss of yourself when it comes to domiciliary care because you're going to these calls yourself but i think it's going to be sweeter if you have a car so if you're coming to the uk and maybe you don't like you want to do domiciliary care but the transportation the fact that you have to work from one place is going to be an issue i think you should consider getting a car yes that is just a simple solution because without a car it's really going to be difficult even if the person is living behind you because there's going to be the next person that is like that that is like five minutes away ten minutes away so that is just it for domiciliary care excuse me so we have um Apart from domiciliary care, we have support work. Now, this is like the I didn't know. That, like when when I when I hear support work and healthcare assistant job, I feel like they are the same thing. But I now found out that the roles are actually more. I don't know how to explain it. They are more. They they are a little bit different because when you come to support work, that is where you have like residential home. If you're a support worker, you'd be probably working in residential home. Now, for residential homes can be actually divided like you can you can find yourself in two places you can actually be in a residential home where it is just elderly people please get that you can be in a residential home when it's actually just for only like that is actually for only adults under the age of 60 and trust me support work is the sweetest because especially when you're working with elderly people because they are stress-free you're not expecting any behavioral change other than them be probably vocal nobody's gonna hit you nobody's going to scratch you and all those things so support work is like you can find yourself in residential homes where you work with adults and then you can actually work where in a residential home where you have people with physical disabilities mental illness like yeah dementia and all those stuff so it's really like broad it's not just one when they say residential it's not just one because they keep like different it's like they, they can keep actually different can the, the firm what am i saying so when they say residential own do where to find out if the residential what's the purpose like who stays who who, who is the resident in that um, residential home are they like strictly adults or is it a mixture of different people because I found out that there are also care homes, residential homes that, sorry, the light is too much, but we have to manage. There are also like residential homes where you have these different, um, different, I don't know how to explain it. Like the residential home, like they have different people let's say different people the probably upstairs is for people that the elderly yeah, yeah just elderly people the next stair like the next story building is going to be for people with dementia physical disability then upstairs which is the last floor is going to be people with um mental disabilities or illness so you can find firms residential homes that are like that and then you can still find residential homes that are strictly elderly but i think elderly like when you work with like in a residential home where they are just elderly people it's actually sweet it's seamless like you're not stressing no cap you're going to be if you say 10 hour shift you're going to be there from that whatever time to whatever time without even feeling like oh i came to work because you when it comes to residential home there's actually time they are like times too and then sometimes some you find out that some don't actually have like a time frame just the way you have your domiciliary and they say you have to be in this person's house for 10 to 2 2 to oh this light is too much 10 to 2 2 to 4 it's actually different with um support work sometimes residential home because you have to wait for the residents to probably wake up you don't have you're not going to be waking them up to have their shower or have their breakfast you have to wait for them to wake up and then there's some residential home where you can actually like there's a time there's like a time sheet everybody gets their personal care their breakfast whatever whatever so 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 from maybe seven o'clock to ten o'clock and then you guys would have like rest do you understand you guys will rest and then from 12 o'clock which is like lunch time they call it dinner dinner time 
you do your you there's activities that should be done from 12 o'clock and then you rest like you can sit down just be with the residents and all those things and you can actually be in a resident when, when it comes to i think men's or um when you're in a a resident as a support worker where you have people with physical disability you're around the clock it's easy but you're around the clock you're not allowed that like, you're not supposed to be seated like you're permanently sitting in one place for two hours three hours especially when you're working in a place where there is like mental Ill- people with mental illness or physical like yeah mental let me just use the word mental illness that you have youth teenagers you're not supposed to like you you hardly sit down like i said oh i'm sitting for one hour no because it's usually busy it's usually more occupied even if there's nothing much to do you your attention just has to be on them for some certain reason your, atten- your attention has to be on them because these are people who are vulnerable and you, you the moment you take attention from them something can just go wrong do you understand so it is less it's this type of job this type of residential homes are like you find yourself in this situation when you're in like i said a residential home where you have people with um teenagers and people with uh, mental illness and the rest you would find yourself especially when you meet someone who has dementia and now has like a little bit of mental disability it gets really really tough not like tough tough but yes so um i'm going to be laying emphasis on mental working in a mental health residential homes if you find yourself as a support worker in this kind of place you have to be mentally and physically prepared don't just apply for the job because you feel like you need a job because by the time you start this job it's going it's going to need your attention both physically it's going to need your attention mentally because whatever is going on here is going to take you time to process and if you're that person that is like you're, you you're not used to seeing it like violence you're not used to seeing it like different behavioral yeah, outburst and the rest you might probably not be able to work in care homes that have like mental health this, like mental disability what am i saying yeah mental illness in, in residence it's mental illness and the rest so what do you do you pick for you look for job if you are like soft you want soft life please look for a care home right like a support work that is just for adults where you take care of just older adults elderly people that one is better but if you are young you feel like you want to add more values to people's life because these people are not like when they say mental they're not like always negative they're not always fighting or anything but you know when you have like the personality disorder some days you are bright some days you're not bright some days you want to you want to take your life some days you don't want to take your life some days you're happy these are the characters you're going to like meet where is this song coming from jesus so these are like the characters you're going to meet if you're working in a care home a mental health whatever whatever care home now one <clears throat> another thing is another care home and um, another care job or care job here you can find you can also find here in the uk is the living care the living care is i don't know i've not i've not done that one i'm not even i don't think i'm even going to do it i think guys can do it or oh, yeah i think guys can do it because the fact even when i was doing the like the fact that i'm entering somebody's house that i am i don't know somebody i don't know somebody i'm i've never seen in my life all those things i don't know their character and all those things it's really difficult when i enter I enter with caution so talk more of living with somebody i barely even know i don't know their when they're in their baseline i don't know when they are calm i don't know when they are agitated so it's really really difficult so living care is another care and people do it and it pays more that's the funny truth it pays more some people are paid even i think 600 in, in a week 600 pounds a week some people are paid 500 pounds a week just depending on the company some people have paid 800 900 pounds a week in living care so in living care you're going to be it's more like domiciliary but it's just one place it's just one person you're going to be taking care of so you're going to be living with that resident in their own home and you're going to be doing jobs like um sorry i forgot to mention the activities like your role when it comes to um a support worker so it's it's, it's easy and more fun when i think support worker is more easy and fun because 
you are dealing with people who can be stable to some point and they are very independent yes if you're de- like support work is true to me i think it's true unless you're working in that mental even the mental health is can is okay because they're not always agitated sometimes you meet them in a bright mood sometimes you might meet them really really agitated so it's not every day it's not every time so you can just come to there and it's calm tomorrow is not calm and what you actually do there is just personal care i think most of the residential home have like their kitchen and the chef so you see people like you're not doing so much you're just probably doing tea or coffee which is something they like tea coffee sandwich these are like the things they do because most of their food are like packaged so the processed like their packaged food so you just microwave and all those things so you do personal care you don't administer medication in some of these residential homes because they have like nurses they have yes they have nurses they have senior carers so you're not just you're not going to be administering medication in some residential home as a support worker so you can actually take them out for shopping now because they have a chef and they have a general kitchen i think you wouldn't be going out too much but you would be taking them out i think you're going to be taking them out for just social activities just to make to give them like this social um social life and response like responsibility so you take them out for shopping when i say shopping it could be anything not just food you actually take them out to things like museums and all those things so you're going to be de- doing that if you're a support worker and basically you're assisting because these people are mostly unlike elderly who might be 80 years and just bed bound most of these residential homes have um, youths like teenage like youths and like the ages are not too far for the, so they are in they are dependent yeah no they are independent sorry so they can actually take care of them themselves to some extent you're just there to assist them so back to living care you're living with that person for maybe let's say in a week you're supposed to be there for a week then maybe you're a week off i i think i have a friend that does that so he's a guy he lives he lives with that lady for i say lady a guy i don't know i don't know which is if he's a male or a female but he lives with that service user for a week and then he's off for a week and he go back he goes back the next week that's just how he does it and it's funny because he has a family so i don't know how he does it so living care you're going to live with them practically just to um give them companionship take them out to shopping their personal care um literally everything is support a support worker is supposed to do yeah i don't think I've, i've not done living care so i don't know in depth about their their kind of activities like medication i think cooking would be part of it definitely because they're living in that person's house and they want to like personalize their own care in their own environment so you're going to be doing things their own way you're going to cook the meals they like and all those it's not like residential home where the chef gives you just two two menus two foods out of the menu and then you pick one you like and they cook it generally do you understand so that is it so if another thing i want to add is because i think what that was one of the things that affected me because i was in a hurry to land a job when i was applying for this job in in india that's my domiciliary care work till up until when i went for training almost the last day of training that was when i knew oh this is what we are going to be doing today we are going to be walking up and down and i'm like i told the girl i'm like the nigerian girl I was arguing with them guys. I was really arguing. I know ah work okay. No, it's not that's not what I saw. Until I went back, that was when I realized that oh you actually read your job description. Like if you click for a job, please read through the your role, what the company is all about, the kind of people they take care of. I'm only saying emphasis on the kind of people, the kind of care they provide. Let me use the word, the kind of care they provide because different different care home different different <clears throat> excuse me different care companies have different kind of people they provide these services for people with autism people it can be children it can be so when you're applying for this job please read the 
um, what do they call it? Your the, the, the job description. First off, check if this is something you want to do. Do your research. Just actually just do your research. I think research is really important. Do your research because if you are a student, I'm sure you know that you have just if you're here for a one year master's program, you have just one year to do your studies, get a job, land a land a type to visa sponsorship at the same time. So you wouldn't want to be changing job from one job to another and then at the end of the day you don't even have a cumulative at least four to five months experience in one place so these are like the disadvantage because me personally i would prefer to have like when they say oh how many months or how many years experience you have in care i want it to be just one company at least it has this, it, it adds a it, it just add this value to your cv so basically just check out the job description if it's something you would, you would love to do if it's something you are up to do especially when if you cannot do mental health because i have friends that are collecting that sometimes in it like they would collect blue and there's nothing you can do you cannot beat the person because they are they are they are, they are service users like you should know that this is what you signed up for so if they blow you paid you cannot even do anything you cannot reply you cannot return that blow back you can't do anything you can't in fact if you even report they'll be looking at you like wait what is this one this is an unknown i waiting to come to come do so if mental health is like really really something you cannot do just don't even apply because it's you <laughs> my friend was like ah. he said don't follow these people you don't be like saying he said don't follow this people. they lose my mind i'm like don't say that and to be honest she's serious because it's not easy today you see this person she's all lovely all chef she's even talking to you and the next day she's not talking to you she might even say i hate you fuck you get up and you cannot do anything so if you are somebody that has high temper don't go for mental health or go for elderly or probably living care because what you're going to be doing is probably just do your morning whatever do your morning errands like wash plates give the person food personal care and you're good to go time will just fly but honestly you know like the point is just actually look out for the roles and the kind of service that is provide the company is providing for this service user before you apply for this job and i hope this educates you now before i finish this video i just want to quickly i just want to quickly chip in that if you're a student and you're coming to the uk anytime soon anywhere in the uk anywhere in, in fact in any other country like australia yes us and asia in all those areas and you're looking for accommodation you have accommodation issues don't stress yourself especially like i used to emphasize like i used to emphasize on the fact that we actually go for private owned houses when we can act, and you're complaining about the expenses how expensive the money is why you can actually use the other means the other accommodation agencies that would give you accommodation as a student within your budget so if you're a student and you're coming to the uk anytime soon and you're looking for accommodation based on your budget your style your lifestyle please check out amber students amber students is like they have luxurious apartments from from low budget to high budget to middle budget amber students has different accommodation in different locations leeds manchester name it just name it sunderland and they have really good quality houses or accommodation from studio to a one bedroom to a shared accommodation and as a student you don't have to just jump into expensive accommodations from private landlord unless you're here with let's say family of five family of four but if you are just on your own and you want to actually save money because i'm sure you've heard of high cost of living check out amber students they have so many nice accommodations and um yeah accommodation for you guys so thank you for watching this video i hope it informs it educates and enlightens you thank you and i'll see you in my next video Ciao.